So the first question we have to ask is, what are we actually analyzing in thermodynamics? And that might seem like a crazy, obvious question. Well, we're going to analyze some stuff and we're going to apply the, law, the laws of thermodynamics to some stuff. But even this part, this very, very first part of thermodynamics trips people up. Now, what we're going to apply thermodynamics to is systems. And specifically, we're going to define a system in one of two ways, either a control mass or a control volume. Now, what does that mean? Well, let's just take for an example something that we're going to look at and analyze pretty frequently in thermodynamics, something you've probably seen before. And that is the piston cylinder apparatus where we have some piston and inside there's gas. So we'll just pretend it's air, which is primarily oxygen and nitrogen. Now, even this apparatus, you could pick the system, the thermodynamic system that we're going to apply the laws of thermodynamics to in different ways. So again, let's think about it first as a control mass. The control mass is going to mean that we say our system is the mass inside the piston cylinder apparatus. In other words, it's the gas, it's the stuff, it's the physical stuff, the nitrogen and oxygen, that mass is going to be our system. We could also say a control volume is our system. And the boundaries of the control volume could be defined in multiple ways. And this is really subtle, but bear with me. It's going to seem really kind of pedantic, but it actually matters. So we could define the control volume by saying everything inside the piston cylinder apparatus. In other words, if I were to draw some dotted line like this, everything in this dotted line is our control volume. And now you might say, hey, wait a second. Isn't everything in the control volume, what you just said, isn't that also the control mass? Aren't we just like saying the same thing? Isn't this kind of redundant? You're correct, at least for now. So right now, yes, the control volume where I'm saying everything inside the piston cylinder apparatus, this control volume is our system. And that is also, in this very simple scenario, the same thing as the control mass where we say the mass in the piston cylinder apparatus is our system. And I'm going to actually make it one step further. The control volume could be everything inside the piston cylinder apparatus, which means that as the piston cylinder go, as the piston goes up and down in the cylinder, that control volume actually changes boundaries, right? Because if the piston goes up like this, and we're saying everything below that piston is part of our system, you'll see that the control volume then would be everything within this new dotted line like this that I'm outlining. So that shape actually changes. Now, alternatively, we could say, I'm going to define the control volume as this specific imaginary box that's unrelated to the physics of the situation. I'm going to define it as where the piston is now. But even if the piston goes up, my system is still this imaginary box. So actually, the nitrogen and oxygen are going to basically leave the system as the piston goes up. But those are all perfectly valid ways to define the system. So again, there's actually three systems we've defined here. One, the control mass. We're saying everything inside all of those molecules, that's the system. And that system could change volume as the piston goes up, and it will change volume as the piston goes up, but it's still going to be those same molecules. Alternatively, we could define a control volume. We could define it by saying this rigid boundary where the piston starts, everything in that imaginary boundary, that volume, is our system. And as the piston goes up, stuff is going to leave our control volume because we're defining it as this imaginary rigid box. And then lastly, we could also define the control volume as everything below the piston. In other words, as the piston goes up, the control volume is still going to be defined by everything below the piston. And so that control volume will change shape and it will continue to have all of the molecules of gas inside of that system. So although it might seem a little redundant again, this is actually really critical because unless we define a system very specifically, we're not going to be able to apply the laws of thermodynamics in a clear and consistent way to the problem that we're dealing with.
The next thing I want to point out is that there's a few different ways that we can classify and further describe what we're talking about. And so we can describe a system in a few different ways. One of those ways is by saying the system is open. So it could be an open system, a closed system, or an isolated system. Now an open system means that mass and energy can be exchanged with the surroundings. The surroundings are everything that's not the system. So we define the system, everything that's not the system is the surroundings, and together that's what the universe is basically made of. It's your system, everything that's not your system, that's everything in the universe, at least for you know, what we're describing in this introductory thermodynamics course. A closed system is one where energy can be exchanged with the surroundings, but mass cannot. And an isolated system is one where neither mass nor energy can be exchanged with the surroundings. Now, these words are not really necessary. They're just kind of uh, ways to describe the system. The key is that you actually know how to define the system, but just as a thought exercise, let's go back and think about how these words can be applied to the systems we've already defined for the piston cylinder apparatus. So for the control mass, that again is where we're saying everything inside the piston to start, specifically those molecules of nitrogen and oxygen that are in the piston to start, that is our system. So is that open, closed, or isolated? Well, in this example, it's closed, right? We're saying those are the molecules that we're analyzing, specifically those molecules. So mass cannot be exchanged with the surroundings with that system because we're picking the molecules that we already want to analyze, and that's what we're looking at. Energy can be exchanged because let's say we put a flame on the bottom of this apparatus and heat it up. Well, clearly energy can be exchanged with the surroundings. Next, let's look at the control volume where we said the control volume is this imaginary boundary of this rectangle where the piston starts, but we're not going to change the boundaries of the control volume. So as the piston goes up, we're still going to have this rigid imaginary boundary that are, is our control volume. Well, that's actually an open system. Again, energy can be exchanged if you put a flame under this piston. Energy can go into the system, for example. And now, again, we're saying the volume is rigid. Now mass can be exchanged with the surroundings because as the piston goes up, nitrogen and oxygen will leave they'll go up in the diagram here, they'll leave the control volume, which again, we're saying is this rigid control volume where the boundaries are imaginary. So even as the piston goes up, nitrogen and oxygen can leave and the boundaries remaining fixed here where we just have an imaginary boundary. Lastly, we can define the control volume where we said the volume of everything under the piston. So as the piston goes up, that boundary is gonna go up with us, remember, and Therefore, that system is closed. So energy can again be exchanged if you put a flame under it. But now, there's no other way for mass to go in or out of the system because this nitrogen and oxygen will always remain under the piston. And remember, our volume that we're analyzing is everything under the piston. So that imaginary boundary line here moves up as the piston moves up, and so mass never enters or leaves the system. So although this might, again, seem really redundant, you have to know what you're analyzing. Anytime you're going to apply a law of thermodynamics, you have to pick a system, and you want to pick it in a way that's going to help you solve the problem at hand. And we'll talk more about how to do that as we get into some actual examples. But again, you have to know systems are either a control mass or a control volume. You can describe them with these other terms, open, closed, or isolated. And you have to define it really clearly so that you can actually do thermodynamics.